Well, hello everybody and welcome back to New Egg TV. I'm Steve and today you guys are all in for a very special treat because Paul is going to walk us through power supplies. This is the PSU category video. So Paul, without further ado, please, what is a power supply for all those out there who do not already know? Well, Steve, a power supply supplies power. <laughs> it's fantastic. So this is clearly a power supply. Yes, exactly. So um, I guess to be a little bit more specific, we're talking about PC power supplies and even more specifically than that, desktop PC power supplies, because if you're talking about something like a laptop, usually that power is supplied externally via a brick or that sort of thing. But uh, the main uh, thing that a power supply does is it takes the sort of unruly, unstable, high voltage power that comes from the AC power plug on your wall, mm -hmm. and through a series of capacitors and resistors and other filtering hardware, uh, puts it out at the other end in the form of low voltage, stable, uh, uh, AC, I'm sorry, DC power, and that is what your computer components need in order to run pro properly. That's fantastic. Okay, so taking alternating current, putting it into DC, making it very happy for the computer. Now, why shouldn't I skip on a power supply and just get like maybe a really cheap one, let's say? Well, uh, as the power supply is often uh, the, uh, the illegitimate stepchild in, in the computer building uh, arena when you're getting all your parts and components together for a system. Often you might be very interested in a really nice processor or motherboard, a right. uh, really high-end graphics card. And by the time you've gotten through all those things, you find out you have 30 or 40 bucks left for the actual power supply. However, the power supply is an extremely important component in the computer, mm -hmm. and some would argue the most important, although th that's certainly debatable. But I have a, 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 a little uh, case study here to present to you. Oh, please. If you will indulge me. And that is the dangers of uh, skimping on the power supply. So I have a unnamed power supply unit right here. Clearly removed the And uh, this was one that failed. Yes, I, I covered up the label. I don't want any to incriminate anyone. I can tell you it's not a power supply that new egg sells. Mm. Uh, here's the failed component right here. And um, basically, this, this power supply was uh, used in the system, mm -hmm. worked just fine. And then guess what happened? What? Summer. <laughs> Summer happened, Steve. Summer happened. The temperature rose by 10 or 15 degrees. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, with a pop, this power supply Bit, bit the dust and also doesn't seem to want to pop off. So um, I'm removing the top of the power supply here, which you should never do with your power supplies at home. But uh, can you possibly tell where in the internals of this power supply the failure occurred? I'm going to guess where all the, the black charred area is there yeah. on the PCB. That is correct. So right, right there, you can see the burn mark, and that is where this particular component failed. Now fortunately in this instance, uh, it heated up, it burnt the PCB, this component fell off and the power supply stopped working. However, um, power supplies can fail in much more spectacular fashion than that. In fact, they can sometimes kill other components in your system and potentially even start a fire wow. in the case of really, really poor, poor quality power supplies. So that's the main reason why you should never skimp on the power supply. Other thing, if you're just looking in here, you might notice a lot of empty space. Um, there's just simply not as many components in here that are helping to help filter that power and uh, get all of the, all the jagged edges out, so to speak, mm -hmm. in order to provide you that nice clean power that your uh, computer actually needs. So this is just an example of how a cheap power supply can fail on you and can possibly cause problems. And, um, as well as uh, damaging just, your components inside. As, as well as too. potentially damaging some components. In, in this particular instance, fortunately, uh, the, the, the computer in question was okay. Oh, good. But I replaced it with a higher quality power supply and it's been doing just fine ever since. Well, that leads me basically to my next question, Paul. I mean, what should I or anybody else out there be doing when they're searching for a power supply? What, what's some of the key things they should be looking for, I guess? Well, that's a good question, Steve. Uh, the first thing you probably want to take a look at is going to be form factor. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, that's usually a pretty easy answer. The standard mm -hmm. form factor for most desktop power supplies is ATX. And if you see a power supply and it says ATX, then it should fit in your case. Uh, it's a standard for both the power delivered by the power supply as well as the size. The size is mainly the back of the computer case where the power supply actually connects. There's a standard for the screws there and that'll just make sure it will drop in hmm. and uh, actually fit inside the case. Uh, another thing you might want to look at just when it comes to the physical size is the length of the power supply this way. Right. Because some power supplies are longer than others and um, especially if you're working in a smaller case, maybe a micro ATX or mini ITX, uh, system, you might not have quite enough room there, mm -hmm. um, so you might want to look into something that's shorter. Then, of course, higher wattage power supplies require more internal components and capacitors to store that energy in order to 
will be delivered over to the rest of the system. So higher wattage power supplies are typically are going to be a little bit longer. So let's say I already know what size power supply I need to have. Let's talk about how I'm going to figure out wattage. Uh, well, wattage is definitely uh, also one of the most important factors when it comes to choosing a power supply. Uh, basically, it, you sh it's not something you should ballpark. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, there is a wattage calculator available on Newegg.com. If you go to the power supply section, it's available in a link right there on the left-hand side. There's also a Cooler Master power supply uh, wattage calculator at coolermaster.outervision.com. Uh, we'll post links to both of those in this video's description if you want to check it out. But basically, you go there, you enter the components uh, that you're planning on putting in your computer. It will give you a wattage. And then I'll usually recommend going a little bit higher than that mm -hmm. uh, just to provide yourself with a little bit of extra headroom. And then also, if you're potentially planning to upgrade your computer in the future, maybe you start with a single graphics card, but then you want to jump up to SLI or Crossfire, um, make sure you've got enough headroom on your power supply to do that. So let's talk a little bit about efficiency now, because we've all seen, you know, platinum, gold, silver. So talk to me about 80 plus gold efficiency or any of the other types. Uh, well, 80 plus is, is pretty much an efficiency standard. Um, several years back, they did some testing and they found that most uh, PC power supplies would actually only use about 70 to 75 percent of the power that they were drawing from the wall. So mm -hmm. say, for example, your, your system needed 75 watts of power the power supply would actually pull 100 watts from the wall, mm -hmm. deliver 75 watts to the system, and then the rest would be floating away in the form of usually heat that's mm -hmm. generated and just heats up the inside of your case. So a more efficient power supply um, can uh, save you money on your electric bill. Uh, it can also keep the inside of your computer case a lower temperature, which could possibly even allow you to maybe overclock a little bit more, that sort of thing. Um, but 80, 80 plus is a, is a set of standards, and you have everything from 80 plus to 80 plus bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and there's even titanium, but that's really <laughs> only available in the, in the EU from, from my understanding right now. But um, the higher you go in, in the precious metals list, the more efficient the power supply is, and uh, the 80 plus website has information on what exactly the efficiency is, but you can actually get up to 90% or higher efficiency by going with an 80 plus rated power supply. And the other bonus of that mm. is in order to get that type of efficiency, you almost have to use better quality internals in the power supply itself uh, in order to do that. So typically, if you pick up a power supply and it's heavy, I know that's a, it's, this is a very, very <laughs> vague, way, vague of way of doing that, but the heavier the power supply usually means Higher quality and components in here. You feel feel the weight of that one. Oh yeah, yeah. And then feel the weight of that one. To be the hands of all of you out there, yes. I will tell you right now, this is clearly much lighter. This is than much that one. much much lighter, and that's that is that's because it sucks. So that basically moves me to my next question, Paul. Um, so we've all seen modular, partially modular, and fully modular. What can you tell us about that? Um, so modularity is more of a, it, it comes down to a little bit to convenience, uh, a little bit to uh, aesthetics and cable management as well. But uh, we actually have three examples uh, right up here up front of the different types of cabling that's available. Now, um, when it comes to modularity, um, what we're really talking about is the power supplies or the, the cables on the inside of the case that come from the power supply over to your components. Mm -hmm. So uh, this Rosewell Fortress over here on the right is 80 plus platinum rated, very high quality power supply. Also non-modular. So basically all of the cables that come with it are all the cables that you see right there. Tentacles and off the octopus. Yes. And they're all bunched up. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, all that means is that first off, uh, the, the power supply can be a little bit shorter because mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to have some extra components in there to allow the modular plugs. Um, but it also means that all of the cables are, all, are always there. So you're going to need to find space in your computer case to tuck away the cables that you're not going to be using, mm -hmm. um, which might vary from case to case. Whatever the case may Maybe. be. I hate using that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we also have semi modular, and that's uh, represented by our LIPA G700M right here. Um, so here you can see we have some cables that are permanently, permanently attached and non removable, and usually those will be the more uh, necessary cables, the ones that you will always need. So we have uh, the 24 pin main motherboard power connector right there, as well as the CPU supplemental 12 volt. 12 volt connector right there. And those you're pretty much always going to need. So apart from that, we have modular connectors, connectors for the rest of the uh, cables that you might need. So for instance, uh, GPU right there for plugging in uh, PCI Express graphics power to your GPU, as well as for hard drives, optical drives, peripherals for serial ATA and Molex, uh, cable, uh, Molex plugs as well, will be handled by that. And that simply allows you to uh, pick and choose the cables that you want 
only plug those in, set aside the rest, uh, you know, store them in, in your computer storage area, wherever that may be, and um, that way you can keep the cabling down a bit. Um, and then also provide some other options, for instance, um, some power supply manufacturers provide custom cables that you can buy for, case, uh, for, for power supplies that are maybe a specific color or maybe have a nicer type of, uh, of, of, of what's this called? Sleeving. Sleeving, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, Steve. You're I'm very glad welcome. you're here. Uh, quick. <laughs> so uh, sleeving is another, just a, again, uh, kind of a convenience thing. Sleeving will help keep the cable uh, together, so mm -hmm. it won't be sort of splayed out all over the case, and that can help with uh, preventing dust from accumulating on those. And um, different sleeving is of different quality, and um, there's, there's lots more available on that, but we're not going to go too far into that today. Finally, we have the fully modular power supply right here, and here you will notice there are no cables because... Those are my favorite. They're completely modular. Everything uh, is removable. You can unplug it, plug in just the ones you need. Even the main motherboard power connectors, which you pretty much will always need. And I always thought to myself, there isn't really a ne necessity for the fully modularity. I mean, because if you, you just always have... always need the motherboard. you always need these. But then I discovered CPU. something. If your power supply does happen to fail, which can happen in very uh, low circumstances, particularly if you're going for a high, high quality power supply, being able to just remove the power supply by itself and leave all of your delicately tied down cables in mm -hmm. is very convenient. And in I fact, should, I should add something to that yes. too, though, Paul. Let's say you're, you buy a different model of the exact same brand or maybe even an entirely different brand P PSU. Would you then recommend that people keep those cables in? Or? No, no. That's a good, a good point to bring up right now, especially when we're talking about modular cables. Um, and that is that there's not necessarily a set standard for modular cables. So you'll no notice they have different blocks like that. Never. Uh, use different modular cables from different brands. Only go with the same brand and the same model power supply because sometimes these can be wired differently and using other kinds of cables can uh, really really be a bad idea and lead to sparks and fire sometimes and possibly Putting the components. positive to the negative is never good. Yes, that is true. <laughs> uh, however, modular cables uh, do provide you again with that, that, that benefit of being able to only add in, those, add in the ones that you want. Mm -hmm. And um, fully, full modularity will allow you a, little bit, a bit more flexibility um, if you do need to replace a power supply, for example, or if you're swapping some components around and you have any, any need to do that. So I've had a couple situations where I did not have a fully modular power supply and I thought, man, that sure would be convenient if it was. <laughs> but those are kind of the three uh, examples of different power supply modularity. Fantastic. Now, I probably jumped the gun a little bit jumping into the differences between the different modular mo uh, versions, but I actually wanted to know what's the difference between peak and continuous, peak versus continuous power? So this is uh, getting into the specs that you'll read when you're looking at power supplies online. Uh, to, to put it simply, um, if a power <coughs> supply has a continuous power rating, mm -hmm. um, usually you'll say, you know, you'll see this is a thousand watt power supply, or this is a 600 watt power supply. If it's continuous, that's good. If it's listing continuous and peak, that's also good. If it's only listing peak, that is bad. So basically, I do not recommend ever buying a power supply if the only wattage that is listed is peak. Um, so you really want to make sure that you double check that. And then if they list a uh, continuous wattage at a specific temperature, that's even better. 50 degrees Celsius, for instance, is a very warm, but it's also a temperature that uh, if they can test a, con a power supply to provide continuous power at that temperature, then that means you have a really solid power supply that's going to last you a really long time. Basically, put it in a torturous condition, one it would never normally see in real life. I mean, exactly. 50 degrees Celsius is, is way too hot. <laughs> like, that, doesn't, that doesn't really happen in real life. Um, but the bottom line is, put it in that situation so you know, even in the hottest temperatures, it's going to perform like a, like a dream. Exactly. And ideally, the colder it is, uh, to a certain degree, it's probably going to perform really well. Yes, so. that, that can definitely affect performance. Fantastic. So the next question I have is, where can people find reviews about power supplies? Or more or less, why don't I see very many reviews of power supplies online? Well, power supply reviews are a tricky thing. And that is because this is a, 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 as, as many times as you might have built a computer over and over again and, and chosen all your individual components, chances are you've never opened up a power supply and done any, anything with the internals. I know some people have if you have the proper training, mm -hmm. um, which really requires a, a fair amount of training and knowledge. And However, be careful because there's capacitors in there that can hold a charge for quite that's a while right. and hurt yourself. So uh, if you see a power supply review and they say, I took my system and I connected up the power supply and I ran it and I played a game and it worked, so this is a good power supply, that's not really <laughs> a proper way to review a power what if you, supply. What if you hook it up and you start arc welding with it? 
Well, that that I've never tried that, Steve. But okay. perhaps uh, perhaps in another video we could we could test that one out. But um, in order to properly test a power supply, you need some very sensitive and very expensive uh, mm -hmm. uh, equipment in order to put the uh, proper uh, amount of load onto the power supply mm -hmm. to test the, the various components and elements inside. Um, you also need to be testing again at uh, higher temperatures rather than just room temperature to make sure that it's standing up. Um, good power supply reviews will also often disassemble the power supply individually look at all the components inside, mm -hmm. look at things like build quality and soldering and that sort of thing. And uh, those are generally the hallmarks of a real power supply review. And simply, there's not that many websites, that ma not that many review sites out there that do that. Absolutely so that's true. why you'll find m fewer power supply reviews um, than you do for other components like a motherboard or a processor or a case. Makes perfect sense to me. All right, Paul, so which sites do you actually recommend for all of us to go to if we're going to check out some really good reviews? There's a lot of good ones out there. Um, the ones I recommend, and this is by no means a definitive list, there's mm -hmm. others besides this, but uh, Johnny Guru is one of them, uh, Hard OCP, Hardware Secrets, uh, PC Perspective, all of those have the proper testing equipment to do actual real power supply tests. Uh, and then there's others available out there as well, but um, if you're a forum junkie, uh, check out the forums about power supplies, and there's lots of them that have good lists there as well. That's fantastic, Paul. Well, thanks again for taking your time to explain all this to everybody, and no including problem. myself. I appreciate it. And thank you guys also for staying tuned for all the fun stuff we do here at Newegg TV. Stay tuned for more of our category videos as well, and we'll see you guys very soon.